such a bullshit. I don't even know what's going on. Like, what does that have to do with the story? Stupid fucking kids, dude. Did you bring the mic? You didn't bring the mic? What the fuck, dude? We gotta do a fucking story. Are you serious? Don't was it my job to fucking just, just, just I, you know, what, dude, dude. I don't. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I'm using the on-camera mic. It's whatever. The story is gonna be here in like one. Some parents say safety bars were not enough. This is Alex Pearson, Channel 24 News. Alex Pearson, 24 News. This call will be recorded and monitored. I have a collect call from David Gary. Hey, Clark. Alex, I've been to the edge. What the fuck? Harrison Burr's statement is entering. If you would like to accept this in future, collect. I just got the fucking story of a lifetime. What? I want to interview David Gary Clark. Bullshit. Here's the facts of the prison. All right, put Patterson on it. What? Bullshit. It's my job. He contacted me. First off, fuck you. I'm the boss. Patterson is our criminal psychology guy. You're our PTA guy. Uh, yeah, but he contacted me. What makes you think that you can interview a serial killer like Clark? This guy's a narcissist, murderer. He sexually assaulted and dismembered 23 people. A guy like that will talk circles around you. I can't. These guys are all the same. Let me clue you in. They're not all the same. Motives range. Personalities fluctuate. Okay, but Cooper... We pull us off, imagine the press. It would be world news if we play this right. What's in it for you? I want this. You don't deserve this. You haven't earned it. He reached out to me, and he only agreed to be interviewed by me. You say no to me, you say no to the whole story. All right. I'll make some calls, set something up. Go down to archives and get all the footage on Clark. You're not going to fucking regret this, Cooper. You're not going to regret it at all. Don't fuck this up. Pearson. Mr. Hong. It's good to meet you. Okay. 
Got a paper? I got you covered. No, thank you. Suit yourself. This way, gentlemen. If you need me to leave the room, just ask. I'll be right outside. If you feel weird or in some kind of danger, just press the button underneath the table on the right. All right. Room to the left. All right. Inside when you're ready. Okay. You must be Alex. You must be David. Wow. Small crew. Yeah, we pack light. We move around a lot. That makes sense. Would you mind removing these cuffs for me? And when you're done with that, uh, could you give us the room? All right. I'll be outside. Don't try anything stupid, Clark. Me? Never. Don't worry. He's all bark and no bite. Yeah. Alex, we're going to be ready to go in 30, man. Gotcha, man. Um, I'm honestly surprised you reached out to me. Well, honestly, I just really liked your on-screen charisma. Well, thank you. Uh, we're about to start rolling in a minute. Is there anything you want to say before we begin? Any questions? None that I can think of. Sounds good. All right. We're rolling. Today I'm talking to David Gary Clark. Who was recently arrested for 23 counts of murder. Allegedly. Of course. Tell me about your childhood, Mr. Clark. Uh, what do you want to know, man? I grew up in... I, no, I went to high school in Milford, Oregon. And uh, I went to church every Sunday. It's a pretty standard, typical middle-class upbringing. Do you think anything from that upbringing would have indicated these sort of crimes? You mean crimes that I didn't commit? Of course. Like I said before, it's a pretty standard middle class upbringing. Most killers tend to have a not so stable childhood. Okay, I don't like the way you keep throwing around the word killer. What happened to them is their business. I have nothing to do with this. I, I understand. I just want to understand who you are, Mr. Clark. Okay. Well, I went to college at Brigham Young University. I graduated. Oh, you're Mormon? Ex Mormon. I have a degree in accounting and. Can you tell I me more about growing up Mormon? If you wouldn't mind. You know, coffee wasn't allowed. That was the absolute worst part. Would you say that growing up Mormon negatively affected you over the years? Mm, not really. It was fine. But you left. Couldn't have been that fun. I mean, well, there's bound to be some issue when you grow up in any kind of religion, but it's nothing to write home about. Well, like what? Well, they keep you on a pretty tight leash. Well, I had a few Mormon friends growing up myself, and to me that leash is pretty tight. Would you say growing up Mormon represses feelings that normal t teenagers are supposed to go through? Let's just say that I wasn't allowed to do the same kinds of things that other kids my age were allowed to do. Would you like to elaborate on that? No, not really. Sounds good. Moving on. I'm assuming you've heard of the murders of which you've been accused. Yes. It's just awful. My heart goes out to the victims and their families. You mean all the victims that were killed, raped, and dismembered? Yeah, those victims. You know, maybe you are innocent. When I look at Omar Jennings, one of the victims who is a six foot three, 220 pound male, I have a hard time believing someone in your stature could take someone like that down. No offense. <laughs> well, been taken. I, I guess I see what you mean, but in a case of self-defense, I'm pretty sure I could hold my own. How would you? Well, when I'm not locked up in this shithole, I usually have a piece on me. Well, Jennings was shot to death. A lot of people own guns, Alex. Yes, David, but you own a 9mm Glock 17, and the majority of the victims were killed by 9mm bullets. And that is the most popular bullet in the world. I hardly think that that would hold up in any court of law. Fair point. Moving on. How's your dating life before all this? Could have been better. I understand that. Dating around an area like this is tough. How so? Well, Harrisonburg is primarily a college town populated by young students. Wouldn't that make it a bit tough? I guess it would depend on what the girl preferred. You like college girls? Well, it, it depends. Well, I'm the same way. 
Get them while they're young and tight. 2 each his own, I guess? <clears throat> Earlier you said you're from Oregon. You're pretty far from home. What brings you all the way to Harrisonburg? Certainly not young and tight girls. <laughs> I got a job opportunity out here that I just couldn't pass up. Came all the way to Harrisonburg for a job opportunity? <laughs> I needed a change of scenery. <clears throat> hey, Alex. Can you step outside for a sec? Yeah, give me one minute. Sure. What? Dude, what are you doing in there? You just made yourself look like a goddamn idiot. I don't know what the fucking dude keeps denying everything I'm saying. I can't get anything out of him. What was with that, all that young and tight shit? Trying to get down to his level, trying to be more relatable. Relatable? You look like a goddamn pervert on that camera. And I'm not associating with that. I'm out. Look at me. Do not cut that camera until I say cut, okay? Do not even touch it until I say the word cut. Do you even listen to me? I just said Jordan. I'm out. Jordan, do not cut unless I say the word cut. C-U-T cut with my mouth. Do you understand that? Fine. It's your neck on the line. Okay. Is everything all right? Just some technical issues. Nothing to worry about. And, uh, we're rolling again. David, all the victim's right ears were missing. My question, where are the ears? Excuse me? The ears. Out of all the evidence and all the crimes, he's not a single right ear was found. Where are they at, David? How <laughs> the hell should I know where a bunch of goddamn ears are? I already told you before, I don't have anything to do with this. I've got another question. I saw an interview with Jeffrey Dahmer where he said he like fucking the corpses because they're completely Whoa, submissive wait a minute. to him. Would you say he had a similar feeling fucking all those innocent women's corpses? Are you fucking kidding me? Didn't you hear anything I said before? I don't have anything to do with this. When are you gonna get that through your thick skull? Oh, come on, David. All the evidence points right to you. The bullets no, and all the victims match your gun. That is the Three eyewitnesses gun have claimed to have seen you with victims the night before their disappearances. And blood of Hannah Jenkins was found in your car the night that you were caught. I'm just wondering, where are the ears? None of that can be proven beyond the shadow of a doubt in a court of law. And you know that as well as I do, Alex. The only thing I know, David, is that all the evidence points right to you. No. Don't you think the victim's families no. deserve some closure from torment you? The David, torment get your car. Have fun no, wait a minute. What about the torment that the people in the media, such as yourself, have put me through? A completely innocent man is being publicly condemned for a crime I didn't commit while the real killer is still out there on the loose, roaming free. God, no wonder you cover PTA meetings no, and local David. football games. David, this interview is about me, David. Okay, it's about the 23 murders which you committed. No, and the I did not commit those murders. Which clearly points no. it was you, yet you still so vehemently deny. The victim's families deserve an explanation. No. Are you willing to apologize right here yes, and now? Yes, they do. They deserve an explanation. Are you and the entire media willing to apologize for the torment you put me through? A completely innocent man is being locked up and publicly condemned for a crime that I didn't commit while the real killer is still out you there claiming more innocent lives. You don't have an alibi for 20 of the victims. And for the three that you do, yeah. the only one who vouched yeah, for you was a bartender yes. who was fired for drinking on the job, David. I don't, I live alone. I am single. I don't have people around me that will vouch for me. You have an entire apartment complex. And I don't need someone to vouch for me for something that I didn't do. Well, that's the thing, David. You do need an alibi. No, you I keep doing your doesn't hold in the court law bullshit, yet the one thing you need in the court of law, you can't but provide. I can't provide. Now, how does it look, David? Because where I'm sitting, it's not looking very good. God, I feel sorry for you. You've done all this research only to come up with the conclusion that you didn't want my innocence as your demise. And what's the conclusion to slip up. What do you mean by slip up? You want me to contradict what I've already stated. What was it that you already stated, David? No wonder you're some local no-name news hack. You can't even conduct an interview with real facts. You're just like the rest of them, spewing some kind of false narrative to better your ratings. This, this is not. No, and now you're looking like an ass on national television. How do you think they're going to react when they hear that you like your girls young and tight? This interview's over. No, don't stop. You agree for an hour long interview, David. I don't care what I agree to. It's contractually binding, David, by law. I don't give a fuck about the law, and I don't give a flying fuck about this. It's over. Stop rolling. All right, dude. 
Thanks for talking with me. Your ear would make a lovely addition in my collection. What you just say? Have a nice day, Alex. All right. Cut. Have a nice day. I have to commend you at the end of your interview. In all my years of journalism, I've never seen a stunt like that. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. It means a lot coming from you. Unfortunately, we can't use the rest of the interview. Well, I understand that. And we're going to have to let you go. What? But why? I just gave you the best story you had in years. I'm sure that you can understand the board isn't too pleased to hear that you like your women young and tight. Sir, I was just trying to get down to his level. I understand. But you also chose to break every rule of ethics in journalism. Not to mention how you got him to confess. It's still a confession. It's still entrapment. Look, Alex, you're a good kid. And one day you're going to make a great journalist. Just not with us. When we air the interview, the only thing people will see is the end. And trust me when I say the Calvary will have your back. And in other news, today, David Gary Clark, otherwise known as the Harrisonburg Butcher, was recently sentenced to death today on 23 counts of murder. One of the most surprising pieces of footage was a live form interview conducted by Alex Pearson, who is in studio with us to announce his new book, My Interview with David, which details his widely seen interview in Clark's ensuing trial. How are you, Alex? I'm doing great, Rachel. Thank you for having me. Now, what was it like being face to face with somebody so evil? Well, honestly, Rachel, these guys are all the same. They're just all bark and no bite. Many are praising you for exposing Clark, but others are questioning the ethics of your approach. What do you have to say about that? I mean, what is there to say? A killer's behind bars, and as far as I'm concerned, the ends justify the means. So you think what you did was right? I do. And why do you think he told you, of all people? Well, uh, I guess he just trusted me.